whether it's walking or traveling across the wilderness, swimming across a lake, or scaling that rocky cliff to reach that wyvern's nest. There is one thing that will always cause the characters to drop to their knees, sweating profusely and gasping for breath. In this video, I am going to look at the fatigue system in the Mithras rule set. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back. You have stumbled across another short rule video. These are the videos that I create to share with you about rules which within the Mithras rule set so we can concentrate on understanding a specific element of the game in order to implement it in our campaigns. So what is fatigue all about and should you be using it? So before we go on, I just wanted to say that I really like the concept of fatigue and use it throughout our campaign. And later on, I'm going to explain to you how and why I use it within combat and how to prevent those resistance rolls. I have to apologize at this point for these whirly patterns that is happening on my t-shirt. I really don't know why. Anyway, what is fatigue? What is it all about? Well, to quote the definition on page 78 of the core rule book, fatigue measures tiredness and the incremental effects. It is an important aspect in Mithras and it is used to track many different things from strenuous activities to the debilitating effects of disease and magic. So that instantly tells us how actually, how important it is. Now there are actually 10 levels of fatigue in the game and these are fresh, that's the normal resting state of fatigue when you're fresh as a morning daisy. Winded, tired, weary, exhausted, dehabilitated, incapacitated, semi-conscious, comatose and dead. <sighs> okay, if you remove fresh and dead, there's only eight. Now, as the, the level of fatigue increases, it can have an effect on the skill difficulty grade of any skills performed, the movement of the character, their initiative, the number of action points that they have per combat round and their recovery period, i.e. how long will it take for them to recover per level of fatigue. Now, let me give you an example of this. So if a character becomes tired, so moving from fresh to tired, the difficulty in their skills will increase to hard from standard. The character will also lose one meter movement while being um, tired. And while well, a character who becomes exhausted, um, well, their difficulty grade for their skills will be formidable. They, their movement is halved, plus they get minus two to their initiative dice. Now, a full table of all the effects of fatigue can be found on page 79. Of course, when your character becomes dead or comatose, then they can perform no, no actions and can't move, etc., etc., for rather obvious reasons. Now, it is possible for a character to resist the effects of fatigue. This requires either an endurance, brawn or athletics check, depending on the actual activity. So athletics is used for um, exercise, brawn for heavy lifting, and endurance for general activities, including combat. So if a character rolls a successful skill check with their endurance, brawn or athletics, then the character remains at their current level of fatigue until they are required to make a check again. So what are the 
um, activities that cause fatigue and how long can a character do these activities before becoming fatigue or before they have to make a check to avoid becoming um, fatigued. Well, there are three classes of effort or activities within the game. These are light, medium and strenuous. There's a complete table for all these three um, effort classes on page 79. But generally, if I talk you through them now, light is activities that have no real strain on the body, but still a little bit more than actually just standing still. Medium is to related to manual tasks or sustained um, physical exercise. And strenuous uh, is related to combat, struggling against the elements, or physical um, activities in adverse situations. You are probably already thinking of situations when you, the characters may be required to make a fatigue roll. If in our campaign, if a character insists on staying awake all night, then I would require an endurance check to avoid fatigue. But I might also ask for fatigue checks if they're climbing up a rocky mountain or force marching themselves across the wilderness. But one of the areas that I always play the fatigue rule is in combat. But before I talk about fatigue and combat, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras as well as um, actual play sessions, personal blogs and videos about GMing in my series, The Gibbering GM. So why not press that bell button and subscribe so you get a notification when the next video goes live. And if you would like to provide some additional support, then please consider using the links down below to go to my Patreon and Ko-fi site. There you can um, do a monthly subscription to support the channel or one-off payment or donation on the Ko-fi page. Just to let you know, on the Patreon page, there are some special RPG tiers for you to subscribe to. This allows you to have behind the scenes information about the campaign that we are focusing on in our fantasy Mithras sessions. You get background information about the organizations, plus you get a very unique view of the behind the scenes of my adventures where I will share with you my adventure notes as soon as we have finished um, a series of adventures. Okay then, Thank you for all your support. I really do appreciate it. And it moves me ever closer to my dream of being a full-time content creator. Okay, we are well rested now. So back to fatigue. So combat in Mithras can be dangerous. As well as this, it is tiring. In our campaign, the characters can only be in combat for a certain period of time before they need to make a fatigue check. And if they fail, they start to experience the effects of fatigues. Now, one of the things, reasons I say this is to encourage combat to be over quickly. We want the players to actually think this cannot last forever. We need to incapacitate or kill or take the opponents out of the combat as quickly as possible. Now, to make it a little bit easier, we say that once the character or characters are in combat, then they are all engaged despite what they are doing. So we view or I view combat as strenuous, even if you're standing still somewhere, uh, looking or waiting for that moment to cast a spell, because you are still on high alert, adrenaline will be pumping, and you're still trying to avoid being hit by any of the opponents. So while players or characters are in combat, when do they need to make that fatigue check? Well, combat is classed as a strenuous activity. So that means that the characters 
have their constitution in seconds rounded up to the next combat round before they have to make a fatigue check. So if a character has a constitution of say 12, they can continue the combat for 12 seconds before a fatigue check is used. Now a combat round it lasts five seconds, which means that a character with a constitution of 12 can actually go for three rounds before making that fatigue check. How do we get there? Well, constitution is 12, that's 12 seconds, divided by five, five seconds for each combat round, and then round it up. So 12 divided by five is two and a bit, and then it's rounded up to three. Now, if a character has a constitution, say, of eight, then they will have to make a fatigue check after two combat rounds. Eight divided by um, five is one, and then round it up to get the two. Now, we've actually found that characters generally fall into two camps. So I um, can have to make an endurance roll after two rounds or three rounds. Now, knowing that fatigue um, checks are always approaching, then the characters and players become very focused on doing certain actions to incapacitate or destroy or press advantage or cause to flee, whatever. So the combat becomes not only more uh, exciting in my opinion, but also they're really taking note of how long they can last. And of course, it also means that they tend to have good endurance skills. Now I can tell that you are tiring, so make your endurance checks now while I quickly sum up this video to talk about some useful spells. Now, there are some folk magic spells that really um, affect fatigue, either positively or negatively. So the folk magic spell Vigor allows the character to ignore the effects of fatigue for the duration of the spell. So you can see that um, Bartleby, who has this spell, always tries to get it cast on to players, especially the, the fighters at the beginning of combat round or combat beginning in order for them to resist their fatigue or to cast them on themselves, the caster. There's a, another spell, a folk magic spell, the complete opposite of this, um, which is called Tired. And this actually gives a, a level of fatigue to the character. So you can see if, if they don't resist that, that is, that you can use those spells to actually be popular or to actually have a detrimental effect to your opponents in the combat. And that's it. All the rules about fatigue covered in this video. I hope this gives you a little bit insight into the world and maybe you will start to consider whether or not you're going to implement it for those combats. So if there are any other rules that you would like me to look at and create a video on then please do let me know in the comments below. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mithrasing, everyone. See ya. Bye.